I just had a pure stroke of genius looking at these two hatchbacks, both black, both quite close in manufacture date of 2008-2009 and realizing that it's easier to buy a used Peugeot 207 than a Honda Jazz. Uh, now, yesterday I said, oh, the Peugeots can do 400,000 Ks when in a base model. This is the perfect example of a good used Peugeot. And I just want to run around the car very quickly. Uh, when buying a car, you've got to be really careful. And this does not in any way cover everything you need to check. I've got to be quite quick. But um, we'll leave the Honda Jazz to the side for now. Uh, except what we'll do is we'll just have a look under here, okay, at the cab forward design. Uh, Hondas are brilliant cars. This this particular car has not got the CVT, which was just inherently bad. So that's the first point. When buying a Honda Jazz, do not buy that first model. I've got the video about the flooding back seats and all that. Um, the Honda Jazz tends to get corrosion when left neglected with leaves down there, but otherwise, uh, you can see that the engine is set back. Uh, it's it's quite a tight car. Uh, it's a little bit risky. Uh, it's it's a little bit low to the ground. It's a bit hard to see things. But this Peugeot, um, being a the basic model. You nearly have full accessibility to everything else. You'd never buy a car without putting it on a lift. But stuff to look out for when you get to the car and open the bonnet. So, as I always say, if the coolant's bad, shut the bonnet. Peugeots, I have never seen these generations with rust in the coolant. It takes a coolant they call paraflu, which uh, is very hard to describe the color. It's never one particular color. I think it's meant to be orange, but it looks a bit brown. But, uh, you know, now, we're not talking about trekking for head-on collisions and uh, airbag deployment and stuff like that. But you can see the headlights are prone to a lot of UV exposure. Okay. And when the batteries leak, it causes a catastrophe with the wiring. So if the battery's got acid all around it, just walk away, Renee, right? Now, as you can see here in Australia, the booster's on this side. It's connected via a lever in the vehicle. Those levers at very high miles are prone to wear and tear in some bushings and you'll get certain bad sort of feelings with the brakes. Uh, what to check for as well is a high corrosion or any corrosion in these areas but albeit it's fairly easy to clean okay i'm not going to talk about worn tires and that but you can see the brakes very easily on this model you can also see the shock absorbers quite easily the car has wind up windows at the back okay the rear lights are released with one little plastic quick nut to change the globes so this sort of shows you that this is a fairly reasonable car to run now this is for manual do not buy these cars with high miles in automatic the automatics are prone to failure in these cars and it's big money so this is only about base model manuals you can see wear and tear from the uv here but you know you'd rather have that wear and tear from the uv there than have a shiny car with 150,000 miles on it that's you know going to start leaking oil because they've cleaned it up and all that so check your air conditioning the gearboxes are very durable here um uh but you know you can you can see there's no real excessive movement here or anything listen for noisy air conditioning compressors and stuff like that these head units are known to be an issue uh and hey good and um under here are the pollen filters over there so you can see all that yourself you can see the drive belt okay you can see the radiator top tank and it's just a good example of a well-engineered french car which i've never really discussed before but yesterday making a video saying oh some of these french cars in a base model can do 400,000. this is the car 
It's got drum brakes on the back. I've never actually seen one with drum brakes on the back, but that that's that's over there. Now there are an issue. There is issues with these back seat releases, which I'm learning more about. So that that this plunger just comes out. So I believe the piece is Peugeot. I don't know right now, but I believe the repair is to be made from above, from my experience. So there's probably these replaceable pieces here. Someone's had a crack at it, but. Uh, yeah, that, I'll, I'll uh, make a video if we pursue that repair in the future. But you can see here, you, you've got your VIN number and you can check for accident damage by looking in here. So it's quite a good example of a very basic, cheap to run European car. See, there's no suspension. No, that's the, you know, Peugeot do swivel. They pivot that mount, but you can see there's no independent suspension. You can see the exhaust, there's really not much to this car. It's a very rare case where it's easier to buy a used Peugeot than a used Honda Jazz. Um, but yeah, obviously you want to check your log books and all that, but when you move up in the engines here, when you turbocharge them, when you make them convertibles, that, that that's not in, is not what I'm talking about. It's about buying a base model uh, Peugeot 207, uh, and I think this is a good car. Of course, the car has, uh, you know, other issues. You know, they, they can have issues with, with um, the steering and stuff, but uh, I've never had it. Also mounts, you know, very hard to see the wear and tear on the mounts. That other gearbox mounts under the battery. I've got a video about those, but you can even over here see the slave cylinder down there if it's leaking. It's with the rubber boot on it and the pipe. So good example of, uh, uh, a well-engineered car with a dipstick, you know, and uh, you can check the oil and add oil. Uh, you know, you can change your own wipers so easily here just by pulling them off like that. So that's a good, good, um, a, a good example of what you see is what you get and very rare to be able to have a car so basic that you can do a good inspection on the ground. Uh, you can see here if the booster, if the brake master's leaking at the back, stuff like that. So, you know, you know, I don't find these vehicles prone to lower control arm bush failure at these weights and in, in manual. So, but, you know, obviously there's a lot more under there. There's drive shafts and stuff. As you can see, it's all visible. Hey, you can see whether the car's been bottomed out badly. It's, it's a well-designed car. It's not easy to actually hit the sump here, uh, but it is, obviously there's a ground clearance. I, I think there's half a tray missing maybe, okay? But um, I think there's, yeah, a tray's been ripped off the front here. This is a country car and uh, it's quite low at the front. So any European car getting bashed up at the front, like a Mini or anything, you don't know about it because they, um, they break the radiators. Over here, over here, it's a very small radiator. Uh, very cheap parts and effective to fix and service yourself. So that's a good example um, of a European car that's, uh, you know, carefully bought, not a bad buy.